Bayleaf is a working class suburb in southwest Harris County, Texas, though I don't think the word suburb really sticks for the description of this area, as it has seen better days. It was first settled in 1894 as a rural farm community, and then as it was annexed by Houston, it experienced some rapid population growth in the 70s and 80s, as uh, it was a good place to raise your kids. Aleph nowadays is a very ethnically diverse area, and also a pretty ghetto area as well. I no longer recommend families to move into this area at all, as, well, no one really likes to live here. The schools are pretty trash. Everybody here is honestly very shallow. And also, most people who are here are either born here or just passing through as they have come from other states and don't really know the backstory of this area. In this video, I'm going to delve into the beginnings of Aleph and the golden era of Aleph and, well, the decline of Aleph and where it's at right now. Please stay tuned and watch the whole video. And if you live in this area, like I do, you're going to find it really interesting. In 1861, Reynolds Reynolds, well, that's his name, claimed 1,250 acres of land near Braised Bayou. Later on, in 1888, the land was sold to Jacquemiah Seaman Daughtery. Then, in 1893, it was sold to Francis Meston, who planned to engineer a community. In 1894, the community was surveyed and recognized by Harris County. Surveyors named the town Derry, Texas. Ely Fozelda McGee moved from Ellis County to Derry that same year. Then, she applied to open a town's first post office in 1895. On August 16, 1895, the post office opened. The post service referred to her office as Aleph in her honor to help avoid confusion with the similarly named town of Daisy, Texas. Daisy, Dairy, they both sound the same. The site of the post office, which was operated from her home, was honored with its State of Texas historical marker in 1990. Aleph Pozzotta McGee died in 1899 and was buried in Aleph Cemetery which is located in the intersection of Bel Air Boulevard and Derry Ashford. Finally, in 1917, the town was renamed to Aleph, Texas, and the Derry School District was renamed to Aleph Independent School District, Aleph ISD. Education in Aleph was segregated from 1927 to 1937. Aleph's population fluctuated wildly. It ranged from a low of 35 in the 1930s to 200 by 1942. Aleph acquired telephone service in 1943. In 1964, Aleph ISD built its oldest remaining school, Aleph Elementary School later are named to Yoon's Elementary, after Cynthia Yoon's. As you can tell, Aleph was nothing special in the beginning. It was just a whole bunch of rural land and people trying to live their lives out. That's it. There were no major bustling areas, there were no major places to be, there were no landmarks at all. Um, it was really quiet. There were a whole bunch of trees. And from what I know of, they actually had a whole bunch of bunny rabbits around during that whole time. But uh, everything began to change in the 70s and 80s. Oh, and also, the Sam Houston Tollway, or I think it's the West Park Tollway, I don't know, either Sam Houston or West Park. They were gravel roads back then. Wow. And if I had to p pick like a time or two dates for which the beginnings of Bailey would fall under, I would pick 1861 to 1969. Yeah, those two dates I would pick. But anyways, I would now show a slideshow of pictures of how the area looked like in the beginnings of Bailey. Enjoy. kicks off with Aleph being annexed by Houston, which took place in 1977 and then later annexations of Aleph took place in the 1980s. During this time, Houston began expanding westward, 
with the development of River Oaks and Memorial, which so hence brought upon the annexation of Ailey's. Then, you had a whole bunch of people come out into the area in search of homes. The lease population between 1970 and 1985 increased by a factor of four, and because of the massive population growth, Ely ISD had so much trouble housing so many students who had moved into the area. In 1972, Ailey built its oldest high school, Hastings High School. Then, later on in 1975, they built its second oldest high school, Elsick High School. Also, because of the massive population boom during this time, the West Oaks Mall was constructed and finished in 1984. In the spring of 1985, Houston Fire Station 76 was opened to serve the Aleaf area. The Aleaf Branch Library, since renamed to the David M. Pennington Aleaf Regional Library, that's a long name, <laughs> was also opened in 1985. Yeah, 1985. And then the West Houston Medical Center was constructed in 1985 as well. And then the Fame City Entertainment Complex, later named to Funplex. Yeah, that, that raggedy place that <laughs> looks, you know, at a place in the area now. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, had its grand opening in 1986. And it had a whole bunch of things. Uh, roller skating, movie theaters, sound studio, miniature golf, bumper cars. I think it still has those things. Uh, but yeah, it was open during that time. And the demographics of Aleaf during this time were virtually all white. 80% white, I think, in the 1980s. Yeah, and, uh, and matter of fact, now thinking about it, um, Albright during this time, Al Albright Middle School, uh, yeah, it was referred to all like as all white. <laughs> yeah, that sounds that sounds weird as I say it, right? But you know, Albright, all white. Yeah, people and and Katie called it that because I think 100% of the students were virtually, you know, all white. Yeah, so all white, all bright. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. But yeah, um, but yeah, the the population was majority white um though this started to see a couple changes or started to change in the 1990s and the tw in the two yeah the 2000s and also crump stadium in the 1970s just started to get built uh right here i'll show some footage of crump stadium and you can see a couple football players playing right there but yeah it's like missing one stand or something like that but yes the golden age of alief was a tremendous time it was an awesome time it was the suburbs, it was the sugar land of its day. Uh, and it's the 90s, it kept on having its, you know, awesome atmosphere of suburbia, and then a little bit into the early 2000s, but then after that, it just it just went downhill into a big old decline. Uh, people moved in, people moved out, a whole bunch of things happened, gang warfare and the decline, but I'm gonna talk about that and the decline, but right now we're talking about the golden age, and ultimately it was just an awesome time to be an alien. It was a very awesome time. It was a good time to raise your kids. It was peak Americana in this area. Yeah, it was peak Americana in this area. That's, that's what it was. That's what I would label it. The Golden Age of Aleaf was peak Americana. It was awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, but anyways, uh, Aleaf ISD kept on building elementary schools, middle schools, things like that. And then now we're going to go into the decline of Aleaf and where it's at right now. And what caused this decline? Well, what really caused the downfall of Aleaf? What were the things? What were the things? Um, but yeah, we'll get to that right now. Oh, and also, if you want to check out all the footage I used in this presentation, I'll leave it in the description box below. I think one of them is the last day of school for Elsick High School, like senior's last day of school. That's what it is. It was a really interesting video. Uh, but yeah, do check it out if you're really interested in the, the area and how it looked like back then. Anyways, we're going to go back to the decline. Or we're gonna get into decline now.
1990s were a violent time in the United States. He had events such as Ruby Ridge, Waco, Texas, Columbine school shooting, the Oklahoma State bombing, and all across the board, just violence. And you saw the rise of gangs and gang warfare. In the late 90s, gangs such as Crips and Blood started to move into the A-Leaf area. This had stained the reputation of A-Leaf a little bit, driving away any middle class or high middle class families from moving into the area. And also not to mention, driving away any good businesses from ever opening its doors to the A-Leaf community. This was the beginning of the decline of A-Leaf, and this one single event already had profound effects on the area. Americanized middle class families would no longer want to move into the area, which they then saw a slow diminishing of the white population there. No longer was the area the very based American culture, but it was now replaced with Latin American culture. And in 2006, because of Katrina, many refugees from New Orleans fled to the Aleph area, and it drove up the black population. Also, Vietnamese immigration drove up the Asian population by a little bit. Throughout the 2000s, gang lines between the Bloods and the Crips were at an all-time high. This further drove away Americanized families from the area, making them leave to Katy, Sugar Land, and the Woodlands. Many of the shops in this area now had Spanish names. Such include Fiesta, La Michoacana, and other Spanish name shops. Including the Spanish name shops, you had Vietnamese shops, which I would not attempt to pronounce them as, uh, yeah, I would not be able to. Aleph by this year was practically a multicultural hellhole. It, the area was really starting to look ghetto, everything was really ugly, nothing looked like it mashed up because there was no American culture. You saw Mexican flags over the place, it was just really disgusting how this area was transformed because of multiculturalism. Between the years 2011 and 2014, there was a massive rise of the notorious gang MS-13 because of the massive influx of Salvadorian immigrants. This is practically the final nail in the coffin for white American families, as they no longer saw this area as a good place to raise their kids at all. So, they continued selling their houses and basically just dipped out of Dodge. Salvadorian gang MS-13 continued to ravage the area during this time, taking up school buildings, playgrounds, shops, and things like that. Also, not to mention gangbanging, stealing things. They were just straight up assholes. By 2016, after the election of Trump, law enforcement really started to crack down on these guys, though they're still a menace uh, and they still recruit uh, school kids in the area and do still sell drugs. Not to mention black children and Hispanic children in the Aleph area don't even stand up for the pledge. They don't even pledge your allegiance to their country. So already you can see how multiculturalism is just stifling away the patriotism in this community. Now, virtually every single family or whatever other ethnic group that lives here pledges their allegiance to whatever stupid country that it came from, whatever hellhole that they came from. No longer do they love this country for giving them an opportunity, but they just love their stupid hellhole country, which gave them nothing and made them come to this country. I'm sorry if I went on a little rant right there, but that really illustrates how mad I am on how this community has turned into such a crappy place to raise your kids. No longer do I recommend families to live here, like, and, and I mean it. it. It just really sucks. Also, the West Oaks Mall, where all families used to bring their kids to buy them school clothes, perfumes, things like that. Yeah, it is now, it's not really empty. Where teenagers used to bring their girlfriends to date them and all that type of stuff. Yeah, it's just, it's not there anymore. It's, it's really, it's just gone. There are almost no shops there anymore. The only, pl the only thing you're really going to find is just the Edwards Theater, and that's it. That's the only reason people even come here. And the food court is really, it's like entirely emptied out. Nothing here at all. Also, don't even get me started on the side of Westheimer. It looks extremely bad, super bad. It's like as ghetto as you can get, bro. It's so ghetto. Also, another thing that's hurting Aleph is apartment complexes. These things are being built left and right, and it's bringing in low-income families into the area. Also, it makes this area not even look like a suburban place to live. It makes it look like an inner city. <laughs> In the year 2022, things haven't really changed. You still have the Crips and Bloods, the MS-13 running amok around here, and also, well, a new feature has been added, sort of DLC up A-Leaf. If you go down Bel Air Boulevard, I think that's what it's called, you can, you know, get yourself a hot piece of cake right there. But I'm being, I'm, I'm being, you know, I'm joking about that, okay? Don't, don't ever do that. I'm talking about prostitutes. You're going to get some type of rabies from them. Don't ever, no, just don't, okay? But yes, that's our new DLC. We have prostitutes now on Bel Air Boulevard. The only one good thing I really have to say that is good about the area, and, and it mainly pertains to an ethnic group, and it's the Vietnamese people. These people have done really well. These are some good patriots, okay? These are some really good patriots. They have American flags outside. Usually their kids are loyal to you know, our country, and they're just all around cool people, man. They're, they're the closest thing you can get to, well, they actually are Americanized, you know, patriotic families, okay? Those, that's what they are. That's what they have, okay? Yeah, they're just, that's the only thing I really have to say about, um, or the only good thing I really have to say about Ailey. Everything else is just...
dog poo poo. This area is basically a no-go for any family trying to move into somewhere suburban or good and also serves as an example that globalism sucks and it will never work. You have a whole bunch of stupid shops that are named this other thing in a different language and this other thing in another language. It just looks stupid and ghetto. I hate it. And now you have a whole bunch of stupid gang members, blood crips, you know, MS-13 around this area. Well, MS-13 got cracked on, cracked down on like pretty heavily by the Trump administration. Like they, they got demolished, man. I'm just saying all these immigrants that are coming here now from Central America and all that, they're going to get influenced by these people, by these, you know, un-American people by these unpatriotic people, by these parasites of our society. And guess what? Many of the people here are living on food stamps and welfare, and they don't have, they have basic, they're basically all rednecks, okay? Ghetto rednecks. By the way, you should read the book, Black Rednecks and White Liberals by Thomas Sowell. This illustrates on why this area is really um, dumb as well, and why the black population uh, has its culture or whatever own subculture. But anyways, moving on. But yes, it is. It is very much. It will take a miracle to save this area. It will take very much some something from God to save this place. It is a very wicked place. But yes, it's really sad how this area has fallen off. You know, it went from its humble beginnings with A. Lee Fils, Elder McGee to the golden age in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, and then. Uh, the big old decline it has seen in the 2000s, 2010s, and the 2020s, and it's just really sad. Hopefully this area becomes a good place again. I have much doubt, though. I have much doubt. I don't think that will happen at all. Uh, not in my lifetime. <laughs> I don't think that will happen, but uh, if you watch this video to the end, I congratulate you. Thank you for watching. Uh, I know it's a 20 minute or so video, and I really thank you. Um, but yes, it took me like a whole 12 days to make this whole video or so. But yeah, uh, I thank you very much for watching. Uh, do reflect uh, the talking points I used and uh, and reflect them on your area, okay? Just see how it's going, all right? Um, if it's a super big boy American area, you're, you're good and healthy, all right? If it's a multiculturalism, yep, it's really bad, all right? I've used that word to death. But yes, anyways, I thank you for watching and have a good day or good night or good evening. I don't care. Have a good one.